Thank you very much. Uh, it's such a, it's such a, um, uh, a pleasure to be here and meeting all of you, old friends, new friends, and uh, uh, colleagues who are all involved in the nurses program together to celebrate the, um, the uh, these uh, conclusions of the first uh, big phase of the nurses program. So what I'm going to do is to uh, give um, again the uh, overview of, kind of the, some of the premises of the starting of the nurses program uh, in achieving its goal and um, also highlighting what are the areas that we have been focused on, particularly on the science aspect. Um, Yoshi will talk more about on the social science and policy aspect. Um, and then um, highlight some of the uh, main outcomes uh, at the end, uh, which is kind of the integrations of the um, different lines of research um, in the nurses program that try to then use it to achieve our overarching goals. The overarching goal is predicting the future oceans, but then the underlying <coughs> theme is actually to use that knowledge generated by the predictions of the future oceans to support pathway to global ocean sustainability. And the reason for doing that is that we all recognize the ocean is really important. If you look at the planet from afar in space, uh, you recognize that it is a pale blue dot that basically tells you how important the ocean is, is un, uh, in affecting the, what happens in, on Earth. Uh, physically and also to human society. And we also increasingly recognize that the oceans are contributing to us um, substantially in the well-being, in the functioning of our society, to providing food, regulating climate, livelihood, uh, supporting livelihood of people, um, also relating to cultures. Many people are actually dependent and directly related to the oceans through the traditions and culture. So the ocean is essential for both life on Earth and on land, as well, and, as well as for human societies. But then, the reason, one of the big reasons why we need to accelerate our understanding of the future oceans is that uh, we are actually, we humans are actually affecting the oceans in this capacity to support our life. Uh, we know that um, the oceans is affected by overfishing, pollutions, habitat destructions, and more recently, we know that pumping carbon dioxide into the atmosphere from our activities, which also affects the oceans through climate change, ocean desertification, and other aspects of things. And in nervous program, a lot of our science actually focus on these new, newly recognized impacts that are, the research started to, 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 to accelerate in the, next, in the last few decades, which is how climate change is affecting the oceans and the interactions with other human activities in affecting marine ecosystems um, and uh, the human societies. And particularly, we have a strong belief that uh, improving our knowledge will actually can help and improve policy. If you look at this figure, it actually shows the trends of the different way of our understanding about the oceans. The first column is basically our basic understanding about how the ocean is working. We have uh, these uh, monitoring systems that has increased exponentially, and this is uh, one of the uh, main drivers of the uh, project is uh, one of the programs that uh, uh, Professor Hoen Samiento has been um, actually driving, which is uh, sending these uh, floats to the oceans to measure the oceans' uh, uh, temperatures up to chemistry and to understand what the ocean is happening. Um, and then we also have a better understanding about our, our impacts on the oceans through, for example, um, how our fishing has been expanding in the oceans, um, as well as how the fish stocks are responding to that uh, by having increasing number of fish stocks that are considered to be overfished, or that we are already seeing changes in the oceans in response to ocean warming. We are already having fisheries that are catching more warmer water species in the oceans. And all of these are actually informing policies that show up over the last few decades where there are increasing policies that are driven, are backed by knowledge that we, in, uh, based on our improved understanding about the oceans and how the human is affecting the oceans. So now we are at the crossroads to the ocean futures. We need to make decisions now um, to make sure that we have a sustainable future for the oceans as well as for human societies. It is highlighted by various high-level assessment and reports, such as the IPCC reports, that the urgency is now. And the overarching questions that our programs focus a lot on is related to the oceans and seafood. 
can we actually provide sufficient seafood to support um, the demand uh, of the world in the next cent in this century? Also, in doing so, can we meet the goals and objective of sustainable development in terms of its ecology, social and economic objectives, particularly under the background that there's climate change happening. And uh, we recognize that to do that, we cannot just do natural science or social science. We need to use both approach. So from the very get-go, the program start to develop this conceptual framework for coupled human, natural, marine systems as a framework to guide our understanding about uh, functioning as well as the responses of the oceans to various human actions. And to be able to understand and then start to predict the future oceans, we also recognize that we need to improve our fundamental understanding of how the ocean functions. Professor Samiantos in his opening remarks highlight that it starts off with a baseline of having really basic understanding about uh, the oceans, uh, how that affects uh, fish and fisheries. And one of the big contributions of NOAA's program is actually to enrich that, to provide a lot of new knowledge, new science and social science to build upon that basic uh, baseline uh, starting a decade ago. And looking back from now, we have gained a lot of understanding about the functioning of the ecosystems, the responses of marine organisms, fish stocks, and the oceans um, to changing climate as well as changing human activities. Um, and some of these aspects uh, will be highlighted in these two days uh, in various presentations by the uh, colleagues and fellows uh, in their research, such as uh, timing of power productions or biogeography and biodiversity responses to climate change um, and how energy transfers through the ecosystems as well. And with this basic understanding, we can then start to actually say something about the future. We start to be able to put together this knowledge into more formal way of modeling the future oceans using computer simulation models. We developed a whole breadth of different types of models to do that. Uh, and that's a big improvement or a big expansion compared to a decade ago where we only have maybe one uh, in uh, uh, models that be able to tell something about the future oceans at this big scale, at the global scale. So it's what so far these models are telling us is that um, we have a pessimistic future that we are facing that we need to tackle in. We are projecting that there will be lower level of biodiversity in the global oceans, particularly if we engage with a business as usual pathway of climate change and fishing. The fish stocks will be less productive uh, there are less potential fisheries catches, and subsequently, we also predict that that will have uh, big consequences on the economy, as well as particularly for those people who are dependent on fish for their livelihood um, and the, uh, the income. And also, with that, um, it's likely that we will have less secure and safe seafood uh, for, for, uh, in the future because of other issues such as contaminations of the food that may interact with climate, um, as well as uh, the less availability of nutrients to, to go to people who need those nutrients for their food security. So we don't only tell sad story in our program. We also start to look at potential pathway to sustainable oceans future because by informing about the future oceans, by predicting that, one of the big overarching goals is then be able to identify what will be the ways to deal with those impacts. And one of the projects that um, my colleagues and myself have been really um, enthusiastic in engaging is putting together this um, integrated assessment modeling framework. We try to put together all this fundamental understanding about the oceans as well as the different lines of models in predicting different aspects of the models in a more holistic framework so that we can start to address the interconnections as well as the teleconnections, the remote connections between these different human activities from aquacultures to fishing to climate change to economics to the changing oceans so that we can then use it to make a holistic predictions of the futures with different scenarios of how the whole society in the world will be emerging. And we can then start to really address questions of the overarching sustainability, whether uh, if we engage a particular development pathway of the world, can we achieve both ecological, economic and social objective in this pathway, 
if we, uh, the business as usual, for example, with our current um, analysis, it shows that we cannot do that. Uh, we will have a decrease in all these objectives. But on the other hand, there may be some scenarios that can help to improve from the current state that we need to explore further. And this is one outcomes of the program that is actually uh, supporting is to be able to then address this bigger scale issue, bigger scale societal challenges that nowadays the whole world is looking for answers. And uh, we are also trying to do that through building ocean literacy. So it means that we need to tell the world in a, um, in, in a way that they understand about our findings, about our science and social sciences. And we have a lot of different engagement projects in our, our program. And one of the things that we have at the, at, 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 at the last year or so is to use um, some of our predic predictions and put it into um, a framework that we can then uh, use it to communicate to the public through a website. And I will give you a really quick demo at the end um, to show you that website and then you can explore that yourself. It is, um, uh, we just finished that, so we welcome any suggestions and inputs as well. So with all of this, the closing remark that I want to pose is that we still have a big challenge ahead of us. It is obvious that um, even with the big resources that Limpo Foundation has provided us with all the bright mind in this room and colleagues that we collaborate, we cannot solve the big challenge just by ourselves. Um, and um, one of the big challenges that we are facing now is how can we achieve a positive future? All our work so far, all our models so far are showing is that the directions that we are heading is downward, is negative. There may be possibility of some improvement, but then this may not be uh, to the extent that uh, we want the oceans to be. Um, so how can we do that? That's a big challenge. I think this is one of the questions that we need to have in mind and think ahead about uh, the future works. Particularly if you look at what the world is heading as a constraint. We have a growing populations, the increasing wealth of the world, which is a good thing, but then also associated with uh, increasing demand from the ocean for seafood and also through other aspects of the oceans that are providing us with. So that provides us with a constraint to work with. With this, how can we make sure that the ocean is sustainable in the future and what the future would be like? And we probably need to think, start thinking about what portfolio of solutions that we need to do in addition to the overarching constraint and activities and human activities that are going on around the ocean, such as CO2 emission and uh, political economic development and things like that. And this is something that I think we start to adjust in, and I think we will continue to uh, engage and explore a lot uh, in, in the future with um, the future collaborations. So with that, I would just want to quickly go through um, this uh, climate fisheries framework uh, of website that we look at. Um, we developed in, in trying to communicate our predicted future. Um, it's developed by uh, two web developers, Gina uh, and Kelvin. They are bright people who really make this uh, happen. Um, so currently, we focus on surf, uh, several indicators, indices, um, that represent different aspects of the oceans. These are by no means comprehensive, but I think this is a good starting point that include range from warming to acidifications to some of the responses of the ocean ecosystem, biodiversity, and fisheries. And these are the products of a lot of our research as well. And we try to keep the website simple. So it has a, uh, it allows people to explore two contrasting scenario, low and high greenhouse gas emissions, and three different time frame, present day, mid-century, and end of century. And we, throughout the years, when we engage with policymakers, uh, we recognize that, and the public, we recognize that they want the information to be packaged in a sense that they are useful for, for them, either at a region, ocean region level, such as FAO regions, or as a specific country level, where the country's uh, scientists or policymakers can use those information for their analysis or for this, their decision making. So that's something that we try to implement in the website as well, uh, to package the information into different geographic conditions. Uh, this is the front page where it is very simple, if you click on the visit map site, then it shows up a map, which is the main interactions interface with, uh, with, with, with the user. And uh, so one can select different ocean regions to look at, and then look at different uh, time frame. Uh, for example, this is uh, temperature, and if you look at uh, the bicell 
predictions of the uh, changes in temperature by the end of the century, it will show you a map of that. You can highlight a particular pixel, and it will show you the projections under that time frame and that scenarios by, uh, for, for the temperature. It also highlights some of the uh, uh, uncertainty associated with the projections. And then you can also change the variables as well as the regions. For example, this is uh, the index uh, species turnover, uh, which is a measure of the changes in species diversity in the oceans uh, under climate change. Uh, it shows it by biogeochemical region. And then if you click on a particular region, it also shows you the projections, the time dimensions of that projections of changes in species turnover over time under um, a low emission scenario. And then you can change the emission scenario to see what happens to the high emission scenario. And uh, then there's documentation of methods for people who want to understand what's behind those indices um, and scenarios. And uh, there's also an FAQ. So it is starting to build up some questions that we expect people may ask. There's more general questions about the future oceans that hopefully we can use this website uh, to help bring those questions, the answer to th those questions to, uh, to people who are interested in. And we are trying to cross link it to other websites um, from our partners uh, as a starting point, of course, is Nervous's website, uh, the Siwanga's uh, data website. Um, and then uh, we are starting to hopefully build big, much bigger connection networks with other <coughs> websites as well. So with that, I want to um, thank you. I think this is an entry point to start to bring our research to uh, outside world to support policy making, to support, uh, to build up ocean literacy for uh, the general public. And, um, it is all of this, of the research and sciences and social science cannot be done without the support of Nervous uh, uh, Nippon Foundation. So again, thank you very much uh, for the support of the program and for the uh, support of all this work. Thank you very much.